There's Wolfgang Poker in the four seat. Everybody knows who he is, one of the best YouTube streamers out there as far as poker goes. All right, we're into the 510.25 for $5,000 in hand number three. We pick up the best hand ever created, pocket aces from the cutoff, and I come in for a three bet to $650. Outlaw with ace jack suited yeah. this time, raising really? the 150. Is that good or bad? Oh, Alex that was a bad going party? Seven five yeah, yeah. clubs oh. and Wolfgang on the cutoff, waking up with two black aces. Here comes on the three bet. As you can see, Outlaw raised from the plus two position with ace jack of hearts. So uh, when I three bet him, the action folds back around to him in the plus two, and now he has a decision. He could either put in the call. He could, of course, fold, which would be kind of nitty, and then he could go for a four bet. Let's see what he decides to do. Happened to be here that week, and we just started playing like 25, 50 yeah, heads up. Yeah, and so Outlaw finding a four bet here, so making it 1,600. He's running yeah, into so it on this one. one three to play he elects to go for the four bet, and I think a lot of his decision has to do with Alex putting in the cold call for the 150. If it was just heads up against me, he might just put in the call. But uh, if he just calls here, it invites Alex to come in as well. And ace-jack suited uh, probably doesn't play the best three-handed. So uh, he puts in the four bet to $1,600, which I definitely appreciate. And now the action is back over to me. I have an interesting decision. Do I five bet rip it, which almost always looks like aces and kings? Or do I just smooth call and let him give me the rest of his stack on the flop turn or river? I decided to stick it all in for my 4,900 effective stack. If he wants to get it in here, let's run it out. Unfortunately though, that is not what happens. He folds his cards and we're taking down a $6,700 pot in hand number three. $100 straddle is out for hand number seven. The milkman raises up the dealer button with a mystery hand. You guys are gonna play along with me here on this one. Trick time and myself both come along from the 50 and $100 straddles. And we see ourselves a flop which comes seven, deuce four with two hearts. Action checks through on the flop, giving me top pair on the turn. The 10 of spades is definitely a welcome sight. Trick time checks it over to me, and now I want to go for some value. And I fire out into that $900 pot for 500 smackaroonies. Milkman pretty quickly puts in the call and trick time's out of the way, which brings in the jack of spades on the river. Milkman could be calling here with any sort of flush draw, straight draws, and all of those brick on the river. So I like checking here and giving him some rope to bluff. That's what I decide to do, and uh, he pretty quickly checks behind. I turn over my cards, and he had one pip lower, queen 10 offsuit. So he definitely would have called a bet here. I missed out on some value, but a uh, great play by Milkman not betting for value on the river and owning himself. We're taking down hand number seven, two for two on the night. All right, fast forward to hand number 34. The knit game has been placed out there, which means if you are the last person with the knit button in front of you, you are paying the tax. It's pretty expensive in this one, $100 a pop. And uh, as you can see, a lot of people still have theirs. And I decided to raise it up to $200 with a beautiful ace-king offsuit from the plus one position. Ty puts in the call with king-10 suited, and Outlaw comes in for a three bet with ace-queen offsuit to $1,000. Trick time's out of the way. They do a quick zoom in on Mudkip there. I don't know if he consented to that one. And the action's back over to me, and I'm obviously going to be ripping it all in here with the dynamic of the knit game. Got to stick my stack in. If I can get a fold from 10s, 9s, 8s, that would be a huge win. And of course, if Outlaw wants to get it in bad here with Ace Queen Offs, we definitely would welcome that as well. I stick it in for $5,700, and now Outlaw doesn't look too stoked about this uh, situation that has developed. However, he does have his knit button in front of him. I could possibly be doing this with hands like jacks and tens and nines. So uh, he ultimately does decide to get it in bad. He is a 25% dog in this one. A nearly $12,000 pot and we're running it only one time for maximum pain. The flop is great for me. It gives me top pair. He's going to need to hit a queen on the turn or the river which does not come, the jack of hearts followed by the jack of spades. For a second there, I think that I'm chopping, but then we get the good news. I'm scooping in this 12K pot, and uh, yeah, we are feeling pretty great about this session so far. A quick look at your standing so far. Wolfgang Poker up the most right now. A few hands later, and the knit game is still not over. We have Milkman and the Outlaw, both with their knit buttons in front of them. Milkman makes it 200 with a mystery hand, and the Outlaw three bets him to 600. We see a few calls from Alex and Trick Time, and that invites myself in as well. I have pocket eights, the Ochos here, 
And uh, yeah, we are going to be set mining. I'm pretty deep. Would love to spike an eight and uh, stack a few opponents here in this one. We're going five ways to a flop in a 3K pot, which comes king, king, three, rainbow. The action surprisingly checks over to myself, and I like going for a small bet in this spot, kind of for protection, maybe a little bit of value, and if someone raises and plays their hand face up, it pretty much means they have a king. So I go for a small bet into the $3,000 pot. $500 is the price. You can see we get Milkman and Outlaw both to fold an overcard, Ace-5 offsuit and Ace-9 suited, and now the action's on Alex. He puts in the call. Trick time does as well, both still with hands that are unbeknownst to the vlog. And the turn comes the six of diamonds. Alex checks it over to trick time. I'd expect him to just continue checking it over to me. Uh, I was telling the story in the flop that I had a king. So I'm not really sure why he's leading out into me now for a pretty good bet. $1,300 is the price and now I'm in a weird situation. The six of diamonds really shouldn't have changed too much. The only hands that trick time probably would want to have slow played on the flop would have been pocket threes and then maybe all of his kings considering there was no flush draw immediately on the flop. So when he just donks into me, this is pretty much never a bluff. He probably wants to get value with any of his kings or boats. I fold my pocket eights, it seems a little bit tight. Let's see what the rest of this hand brings in. Alex folds pocket fours and now finally I can tell you guys that we made an amazing fold because trick time Luck box the six of diamonds on the turn to turn the boat and take down this $5,800 pot. Wow, what a turn card. I'm in the $50 straddle and Ty raises it up from the hijack with pocket sixes once again. I defend with king seven of diamonds and we are going heads up out of position to a flop which comes king six five with two clubs. Pretty bad forward for me because I make top pair but as you can see, we are absolutely smoked. Only have a 6% chance to win this one because Ty has flopped a set. I check it over to him. He goes for a C bet and I put in the call, bringing in the three of hearts on the turn. Of course, now we pick up the gutter to the straight. So I check it over to Ty once again. And now he goes for a sizable bet of $800. And uh, yeah, that is a pretty good price. By good price, I mean a hefty one. It's nearly a pot size bet. Puts me in a weird situation. Without the gutter to the straight, I think now we can consider folding. Not exactly sure what he would barrel turn as a bluff other than hands like 7-8 and all of his club draws like ace-5 of clubs, ace-queen of clubs, ace-10 of clubs. So yeah, given the fact I picked up a few more outs on the turn, I decided to put in the call and the backdoor heart draw completes with the eight of hearts on the river. I check it over to Ty on the river and I'm just hoping and praying now that he gives up with his missed clubs, which is unfortunately not what happens into the $2,400 pot, comes in overbet for $2,600. Of course, he could still have some of those missed draws, but at this point, he's taking such a strong line, betting flop, turn, and river. So ultimately, I decide better of it, and I let my cards go. So a folding top pair, never an easy situation, but in this spot, as you can see in hand number 43, we made a great decision against a set of sixes. Let's go. All right, time to get back on the right track. We were up pretty big and now giving away some of the profits. Slick Rick raises the hijack to $150. We're gonna cover up his hand here for this one and I pick up ace five suited from the big blind. And of course, I'm gonna come in for a three bet. I go large here for $725. Slick Rick puts in the call, and that means we're going heads up out of position to a flop, which comes queen seven six with two spades. Interesting and a fair flop. flop. Great board for me. I obviously have the nut flush draw, but of course, I'm going to have ace queen suited, king queen, pocket queens, pocket kings, pocket aces. Just a great board for me to go for around one third the size of the pot. Slick Rick does not think about it for too long before putting in the call. That brings in a brick on the turn, the deuce of hearts, and now I gotta continue firing here and try to get all of his pocket pairs to fold, like nines, eights, fives, maybe even some of his weak queens might start folding here, like queen 10, queen nine suited. Who knows, I just gotta put money in the middle and hope he folds a better hand. 2,600 in the middle, and I try to go for around two thirds to the tune of $1,800. And now the tempo slows down a little bit. Slick Rick takes his time here on the turn, thinking about his decision. Of course, I still could have some bluffs in this spot, like Ace King suited, Ace 10 suited, Ace Jack, maybe even hands like King Jack suited as well. Other than that though, I'm gonna have a lot of very strong hands, so I don't blame him here for thinking about it before putting in the call once again with his mystery hand. 
And yeah, when he calls twice here, he definitely is getting rid of all of his pocket nines and pocket eights. So I think now he's weighted towards top pair and of course maybe some uh, sneaky sets. Given the fact I have the ace of spades in my hand, it blocks him from having a lot of draws. So when the deuce of diamonds peels off on the turn, I'm in an interesting spot. $6,200 in the middle, I have $5,800 in my stack, setting up nicely for a river shove. However, when he calls me on the flop and turn, definitely weighting him towards made hands as opposed to uh, draws, and the deuce of diamonds doesn't change anything. The front door spades bricked off, it would have been nice just to back into the nuts. Unfortunately, that is not the case. What are you guys doing in the spot? Are you ripping it all in with the ace high bluff? Or are you checking it over to Slick Rick and giving up? Having ace five of spades was a great holding to have on the flop and turn, but now bluffing on the river, what are we trying to get to fold? I think any queen is probably just snapping me off here. And then maybe he would fold hands like jacks and tens if somehow they made it here on the river. I think better of going for a bluff here and check it over to Slick Rick who snap checks behind, so that's not good news because a snap check means that he might have fold to a river shove. I turn over the missed spade draw and Slick Rick turns over king queen suited. And just like that, he is taking down that $6,200 pot. He said he might have folded there. I don't know if I believed him. King queen is a very strong hand. However, my line would have looked super strong shoving the river. So I guess we'll never know. And uh, in this spot, did not put my money where my mouth is. But giving up sometimes is the right play. If Slick Rick was calling this river, we just saved ourselves $5,800. I'm not involved in this next hand, but it's way too good for me to not include into the vlog for your guys' entertainment. We've got Straddle versus Straddle action here, Milkman versus Alex. We are going to show you guys Milkman's King Six offsuit, and we are going to cover up Alex's hand from the second Straddle. Milkman makes it $700 to go over Alex's $200 Straddle. And uh, Alex with the mystery hand here decides to three bet him to $2,000, definitely a strong play. Wherever it is, blind versus blind. And uh, Milkman knows that as well and decides to rip it all in here for $14,000 and the action is back over to Alex. Let's run some of the table talk here because Alex is uh, not in the best situation. It looks like he has a speculative hand. <laughs> wow, this, it would be, we would have a great game if I call and win here. But it... <laughs> oh, you gotta do it, man. For the good of the great, table. We would have a great fucking game. You gotta do it. We would have but he's not gonna do it. Did they talk about doing it and then they uh, never do it, like, you know? I mean, he's heavily considering calling. It's gonna be hilarious yeah, either way. You know Milkman's gonna show him. So I'm, I'm so scared that yeah, like if, if Alex calls, Milkman's gonna win. After a lot of bit of thinking, he puts in the call. So we're playing a nearly $30,000 pot here and Milkman looks to be in a heap of trouble. Flop comes ace, eight, four, all hearts. The turn comes the ace of spades followed by the deuce of spades. Milkman turns over his cards. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring up the table audio here to show you guys what Alex put $14,000 in with pre-flop. Oh, chop it, buddy. Oh, <laughs> my God. This is the best fucking possible solution. Fucking free roll your ass, man. Oh, my God. Oh, fucking free roll your ass. What? what the You're fuck? never free rolling, Milkman. Free roll your ass. ass. He's had two flush draws. <laughs> All right, I added on for another $5,000. In this hand, I look down from the hijack with ace-king offsuit, and I make it $600 to go. The $200 straddle was out there, so uh, that's why I went quite large. Matt puts in the call with pocket sevens, and uh, that brings in Alex as well with jack-10 offsuit. We are going three ways to the flop with two hooligans, which comes four, three, deuce with two clubs. Alex checks it over to me. I'm in between two opponents with uh, two overcards, so I start with a check. And uh, Matt obviously goes for a bet here with his pocket sevens. Alex gets out of the way and the action's over to me. I have two overcards and any five would give me the wheel. So I decide to float him one time here, put in the call that brings in a brick on the turn, which comes the six of clubs. Nothing for me to do other than check it over to Matt, who decides to check it behind, giving me some rope on the eight of hearts river. Do I go for a bluff here? Uh, probably not. I think his check on the turn is a one pair type of hand that doesn't want to go for a bet when the uh, front door flush comes in. I could go for a bluff representing all of my uh, ace king of clubs, ace queen of clubs types hands, but rather than bluff and get called off by worse, I decided to check it over to Matt, who quickly checks behind and uh, that's rewarding him with hand number 98. <laughs>
suited queen reaching for raising chips makes it 300 to go. In the very next hand, the $100 straddle is out there and I make it $300 to go with queen eight of clubs. We got Slick Rick and Alex both putting the call with some mystery hands and we flop ourselves top pair on a queen five deuce monotone board. Action checks over to me and on three diamonds with no diamond in my hand. I like to start with a check here and see what the turn brings in. Seems like a break, it comes a deuce of spades. And now Slick Rick decides to bet out into the field, into the $1,000 pot, comes a bet of $350. Alex puts in the call, it could be a one diamond type hand. I still have top pair, it's a pretty cheap price. I'm going nowhere, put in the call and off to the river we come. The four of hearts peels off and Slick Rick now slows down and checks. Seems like a one pair type of hand, something between sixes and tens would be my best guess. And uh, when he checks, it looks pretty weak. So Alex fires out for $2,000. A lot of bluffs that Alex could have here. He could have ace 10 with the ace of diamonds. Basically any one diamond type hand would wanna go for a bluff in this spot. When I just call on the turn, it also doesn't look very strong. So I don't blame him here for going for a $2,000 bet. Puts me in a weird spot because he's gonna have a lot of bluffs, but of course he could have some made flushes as well on the flop. He could have some boats like pocket fives. Maybe he has a deuce in his hand or maybe he just rivered pocket fours. Either way, I think I have the best hand a lot of the time. So sometimes gotta put in the 2K here. It is a lot of money, but if anyone's capable of bluffing, it's definitely Alex. So I put in the 2K. If he has a better hand, he's gonna get paid off. Slick Rick gets out of the way with pocket nine. So his hand looked pretty much exactly like what it was. When I put in the call, Alex turns over the bad news for us, three deuce of hearts. So he turned three of a kind there and uh, he is getting maximum value from my queen eight of clubs, taking in that $6,000 pot. And now look at that, we are down $6,200 on the session. After our hot start, we have some work to do. I top up for an additional $5,000 and we find ourselves in another weird spot here, cutoff versus small blind. Alex makes it $200 to go, I three bet him to 800 and he puts in the call. Queen 7 7 is a good board to go for a range bet on. That's what I decide to do. And Alex decides to put in the call. Turn comes the Four of Diamonds, and I'm going to continue barreling on this. I have all the Ace Queen, Pocket Kings, all of that good stuff. So I decide to make it $1,200 on this turn. It should fold out a lot of his worst hands. And uh, unfortunately, though, he puts in the call. So this bluff is going to come to the river until our bluff turns into a made hand on the king of spades. I am now going for value. I decide to fire out for 2K. He snap calls me. I turn over my cards and look at that. King 10 offsuit is what Alex has. We are chopping that. Pretty unfortunate though I couldn't get him to fold on the turn. Not exactly sure what he was floating me with there, but uh, we're chopping up that 7K pot. In hand number 107, we're gonna make this a quick one. I make it $600 over a $200 straddle. Brings in a few players and the flop comes monotone, but gives me top pair. Alex leads out for 400, I put in the call and Ty goes for a check raise. And when he goes large here, we have to fold our top pair. Just no sense in giving him a ton of money. I fold my cards and Ty, sure enough, had the nut flush raw. A big overplay there by him, but we welcome it. It saves us a ton of money. And now, ladies and gentlemen, hand number 121, the best hand of the vlog, and we saved it for last. $100 straddle is out there. Alex makes it $300 to go from the dealer button. He's got a mystery hand and trick time decides to call with another mystery hand from the small blind. Actions on me in the big blind. And now I decide to three bet to $1,400. Alex has been getting a little bit out of line. His dealer button range should be pretty wide. And when trick time just calls from the small blind, don't really think he's trapping too often from there. So it's definitely a lot of middling pocket pairs, some suited connectors as well. I like this three bet here for me. I probably could pick a lot of better hands to do it with, but this should get through a large portion of the time. And I would just take down a bunch of dead money. Unfortunately for us though, I'm going against two of Houston's finest degenerates here and both Alex and Trick Time come along here and look at that, we are playing a $4,300 flop. Pretty good flop for me when I have Jack 10 offsuit. It comes 893 rainbow and I decide to go for a C bet. $1,600 is the price I lay both of my opponents and we can see that I was correct by thinking Alex had a wide raising range preflop. Queen seven of diamonds is what he put in the call with there and he folds his cards. Actions over to trick time, still don't know what he has. He puts in the call, so not great news for us. However, if he's just holding on with one pair, I might be able to get him off that on the turn. Of course, we could also spike a seven, queen, 10, or jack, and maybe give me the best hand. So a lot of outs here if he puts in the call, which is exactly what he does. That brings in a great card on the turn without giving me the best hand. It comes the king of clubs. 
Trick time checks it over to me now for a second time. And of course, if I was bluffing on the flop into two opponents with king queen, king jack, ace king, all of that good stuff, I now of course have made the best hand. I want to shove here with all of my bluffs like I would with all of my made hands like pocket aces, pocket nines, ace king suited. So I decided to rip it all in for $4,400. And now let's show you guys what trick time is debating calling with. Pocket sevens, let's get that hand in the muck. How can you call here with pocket sevens? Let's roll some of the table audio because uh, yeah, he was saying some funny things while he was deciding what to do. I wanna pay, I just wanna, you know, like my intention going in here was to check call, check call, I could have ripped the flop, but I was like, man, he only has half high, you know, like just make a tough flop. But also I'm going to feel pretty crazy if you show me like that hand or that hand or that hand. Well, you're not gonna show me, but if you show me that hand, that hand, that hand, or that hand or that hand, and I'm gonna be pretty upset. <laughs> but if you have it's that definitely hand, one of those hands. That hand, 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 you win. <laughs> Which hand do I think you have? Is it that, 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 or is it that, 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 that? <laughs> uh, which one you have? You have all the that's or just a few that's? Hmm. As you can see, he has a 73% chance to win this, but how can he call here with fourth pair? I would have to be bluffing, obviously, for him to be good, and even a lot of my bluffs have uh, two clubs in it, so now he's not in the best spot in the world. Ultimately, though, he's playing some Houston poker and puts in the call. That's rough news for me. I'm going to need to spike any seven, any queen, any ten or jack to take this one down. Let's keep in mind, though, trick time has two sevens in his hand. So a few less outs there for me. We're going off to a river one time here in hand number 121. It's a $16,000 pot. And can the river one time be a good card for us? No, it's the deuce of clubs. So trick time rewarded with that absolutely insane call. Nice hand, sir. He's taking it down with my favorite hand, pocket sevens. Using a trick out of my playbook there, pocket sevens taking down a 16K pot. If he folds there, we are almost even on the session. If he calls there and we hit a 10 jack, 7 or queen, we'd be up a few K. But ultimately, the worst of the three options happened. He called. We lost the hand. And uh, let's bring it to the outro. All right, you guys, that's wrapping up that nightmare of a session from Houston. Traveled all the way down there to buy in for 5K. Topped up $5,000 three different times. I was in for 20. Got out for $4,600. So a loss of $15,400 in around six hours of play. A few things could have gone better for me. Maybe I find the bluff there against Slick Rick with ace five of spades, and maybe trick time doesn't call with his fourth pair. Of course, we could have spiked one of a bunch of cards and won that pot, so that's just the way the variance rolled for us tonight. Uh, yeah, definitely not stoked about that. We are gonna bounce back though the next video, so subscribe if you're new here, because the next video might be my best video I've ever posted on the channel. I'm traveling all the way out to Buffalo to go to a football game and play in a private 5-10 game with a few NFL players, some of which are probably on your fantasy football team at the very moment. So if you guys are new, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. A lot of cool content coming your way to wrap up 2023. I'll bounce back, you guys. Don't worry about me. This 15K loss, we're going to brush it off and head down to Buffalo and then back to Houston a few days after that to try to get all of my money back. Thanks for all the support, you guys. Good luck in the next session that you guys decide to play. Good luck for me. As always, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.